This week on Supercars Talk, Nick Perkett goes from hero to zero, back to hero again, while Chaz Mostert again reduces that championship lead of Will Browns. big news this week is that Ryan Wood has extended his already long contract with Walkinshaw Andretti United for more years. Um, apparently it did run to the end of next year and now it's running for even longer. Uh, yeah, they've shown a lot of faith in the kid and he's uh, repaying them with some pretty good results. Uh, also, for those guys, they did confirm uh, that Raymond Lau will be joining their engineering ranks. Uh, he was with Thomas Randall last year. Um, well, he'd been with Tickford for multiple years, was engineering Thomas Randall last last year and then with their shuffle down to two cars he'd moved across to the Blanchard Racing Team and had left recently uh, and he joins at Walk and Shores as a uh, part of their data engineering crew. Now first up I just want to say I really enjoyed the racing over the weekend. I know there's going to be some people that will complain uh, but I actually I've really been enjoying this year. I think we've got the um, yeah the parody just about right. It seems to be pretty competitive considering everybody said oh this is going to be a chev dominated weekend and then uh yeah well cam did pretty well there on sunday um and it's not like Chaz, he he wasn't out of the equation either um i really enjoyed on saturday the slight different strategies uh with that over and undercutting you had guys who were taking two three or four tires in the stops um you you got down to that battle at the end where you know could nick hold on with Chaz? kind of coming at him harder because Nick had done that super fast two tyre stop while Chaz had done the three tyre stop. Um, then of course on Sunday, although you had Cam blazed away, he won by a country mile in that race. Uh, you did have all of the interest, you know, like the Randall meltdown and uh, yeah, there was a couple of safety cars thrown in there. Having said all of that though, I do have one gripe from the weekend three-part qualifying raised its ugly head again. Um, okay, I don't agree that we need to have this, especially when you've only got like a 50-minute race. Why do we need such a big, long, drawn-out qualifying session for it? But... If we do have to have this qualifying setup, could we please break it down so you lose eight cars in the first session, eight cars in the second session, and then just have eight in the final session? At the moment, we lose four cars in the first session, and to me, the first session, there's no kind of jeopardy in it. Having said that, I mean, Will Davison, Nick Perkat, I think Frosty was one of the ones who missed the cut. There were some big names who missed the cut over the weekend, but um, you, you nearly, you're like, oh, the Blanchard cars and the two cars, the two backmarker BJR cars, you know, they're pretty much the ones. Why am I watching this first 10 minutes of it? Um, yeah, that that's my big gripe with it. Whereas if you had eight getting knocked out of that session, there is actually a lot of jeopardy in that. Um, obviously over the weekend, we did have some big names go out of it, but even then I wasn't, all of a sudden you got to the end and you're like, oh, Nick Perkett's out of this session. It wasn't like I was intently, I just expected all those guys to kind of get through. So I, th I think we need to do something where there's a bit more where you're watching it. I know in like F1 that have, with the three part with theirs, um, it, during that first session, you, you normally not like, it, well, Having said that, more recently you've been paying a lot of attention as the teams have got closer and closer. Uh, but normally you can kind of predict those ones to go out in the first session. You don't really pay that much attention. I think over the weekend I would have preferred to see, you know, three 10 minute qualifying, even bring it down like three six minute qualifying sessions and have three races rather than having so much qualifying and for what is comparatively little racing. But anyway, um, down in the comments, do you guys enjoy that three part qualifying or am I just complaining for the sake of complaining? Anyway, that's it for my news this week. I'm trying to keep it short and sharp because 
going through all the teams does seem to take a lot of time and I'm trying to keep these videos a bit tighter. Anyway, kicking it off, um, the team that's still last in the team's championship, Blanchard Racing. Um, they did show us more qualifying pace this weekend, but didn't really convert that into race pace. Um, Love got himself involved in a lot of incidents over the weekend, um, tried to get himself destroyed in practice. Well, not really, but he in the, the wet practice session, and he spun on the, the wet grass and then he kind of came back onto the track. It didn't seem like anybody bothered slowing down for the yellow flags. Uh, it wasn't really, other than him spinning, it wasn't really his fault that people didn't slow down for the yellow flags, but then he was trying to reverse back onto the track so he could get out of that. And uh, yeah, there was a, a couple of, um, yeah, deep breath kind of moments here because I thought someone was going to get absolutely destroyed. Um, in the races, he had a very similar spin again uh, after he was, um, you know, tr Evans was trying to pass him and yeah, he just kind of ran off and yeah, anyway. Um, race two then, uh, once again with Evans, I'm not sure what happened. It was like he didn't know he was there. Same spot again, uh, just turned across, put Evans into a wall, and actually a lot of damage to that car. Um, at first when you saw it from the front, and uh, I think they had some in-car maybe, and he was trying to drive out of it, and then they showed the ready shot of the car, and you're like, yeah, don't try and drive uh, out of that one. But anyway, um, because of that, Love did get himself on TV a lot, uh, yeah, because um, James Courtney, was he even there? Like, he finished next to Love in both the races, but we didn't really see anything of him. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm kind of pleased they did show. They were a bit more competitive and qualifying, just need to now turn that into race pace. Brad Jones Racing. Well, Jaime brought back the biff. Uh, he uh, earned himself a 15 second penalty in race one uh, for spinning Frosty. Apparently, Frosty had uh, balked him during the qualifying session. He went to talk to Frosty about it, and Frosty basically blanked him, and so he biffed him off at the end of the race. Um, while they were battling for P nowhere, pretty much, uh, yeah. So that that was kind of he he did get in the top ten in race two as well. It wasn't wasn't terrible. They actually showed some speed out of that car this weekend, so they're headed back in the right direction. Um, Jackson Evans, he got his car trashed in race two when Love was doing his lovely thing. Um, Maka was there. Bryce Forward, well, um, he was the standout of the team this weekend. Uh, a solid 10th in race one, Sunday. Absolutely outstanding. Uh, qualified himself in six. Stayed out of trouble. Didn't like granted. Okay, there was a few. It was a little bit of a Bradbury, but he was the one who was there to get that podium position. He just stayed out of the trouble. Uh, yeah, ended up on the podium. He. The, the speed was there. It's amazing. When these guys qualify up the front, then all of a sudden they can race at the front. Um, yeah, the, <laughs> he was the one who was there to capitalize. Uh, it was great to see Bryce finally getting a decent result. And uh, yeah, actually, well, the BJR A team was at least competitive again this weekend. Premier Air Racing. Uh, Really, once again, the hass of the uh, supercars field. We didn't really see these guys much all weekend, but having said that, Slade was without a doubt the team leader, top 10 in both races. Um, never had the pace to challenge the front runners, just uh, somewhere around that middle pack with both of them. And yeah, didn't really get themselves on TV, so you're not quite sure what happened. Team 18, uh, both cars were quick over the weekend. They did show flashes of speed. Both of them say they got screwed over by that red flag in uh, qualifying on Saturday. Uh, Reynolds raced forward to get himself into the top 10. Uh, Frosty refused to apologize for Jaime for that uh, qualifying incident and got himself tipped off at the end of the race. So that was a P nowhere for Frosty. Um, Reynolds was really, really strong 
at the start of race two, obviously qualifying right up the front there. He was running at the front. Did he really need to get involved in that battle with uh, Brody at the start? Brody definitely had more speed. Um, yeah, could Reynolds have given him a little bit more room? Yes, 100% it was Brody's fault, but yeah, yeah there's takes two to tango. Um, on the, it, it's Brody's fault, but it's a bit of a 70-30 one, that one. Like, Reynolds could have, you know, just moved over a little bit and they would have continued on. And, yeah, they could well have finished, like, third and fourth in that race rather than nothing and nothing. Um, he ended up getting a penalty for ignoring a red red light in the pit lane. I didn't see footage of that, and I'm not 100% sure how that all happened, but uh, there was a couple of guys who fell for that one. Uh, Frosty chucked on another set of tyres in that second safety car period on Sunday, and um, that saw him drive from the back of the field right through into the top 10, but once again, qualifying uh, hurt him on the Sunday. But... Having said that, at least they did show glimpses of speed over the weekend. They could have been right in that battle if things had played their way, a bit like what Bryce Fullwood done, did. So overall, it's probably a positive weekend because you can see that there's speed there. Erebus, well, um... Brody, solid fifth on Saturday, and he, on, on track at least, he was starting to look like Brody was back. Um, yeah, getting into that battle right at the start of the race, he'd qualified well, he was battling, and then, yeah, he, he spun Reynolds around, and then um, got released in the pits into Frosty, broke the steering. That was a really, like... Uh, is this something with the, you know, changing pit lane order that they didn't realize that Frosty was coming in or did they just not see him? But um, yeah, that was bang straight into him. That was a big hit. Uh, then, okay, drive through in the pits for speeding. Uh, pit lane penalty for spinning Reynolds and then another drive through for the unsafe release. He ended up 23rd in that race. Uh, what could have been, he could, he was on for a podium really at the start and then it all just fell apart. Um, as for Jack LeBrock, terrible qualifying on Saturday. He was moving forward until there was late contact in the race. Um, he finished last on the road, got moved up after people got penalized. Sunday, very solid a drive to fifth place um just kept out of trouble and yeah trucking along and got a decent result um never he was never challenging the front guys though he was just that you know just that little bit off the pace but once again probably a little bit more of a positive weekend for these guys than a couple of the previous ones because at least they did have pace there or thereabouts matt stone racing ha ah, saturday the day of days for this team fourth and sixth on the grid were converted into a win and a sixth place finish. Uh, yeah, Percat, he had the speed. He was running with those front guys. Then they did the overcut pit stop. Perfect, magical, fastest pit stop of all the front runners. Got him out in front and then he held on the lead. Um, I was I was really torn towards the end there, obviously, with Chaz kind of chasing him down. Uh, yeah, um, long-time viewers of this probably realise that they're two of my favourite drivers in the field. Uh, so I wasn't too fussed which one would, but I, I wanted to see another Matt Stone racing win. Uh, yeah, that, that was just brilliant on the um, on Saturday. And, of course, Cam Hill backed it up with a sixth-place finish. Sunday, <clears throat> the qualifying, they thought they were going to get through on a used set of tyres in that Q1, and they didn't. So, uh, yeah, last on the grid. Um, pff, plenty of speed, though. Uh, imagine if he got even into, like, 15th or something on the grid because he raced through up to seventh. Now, granted, okay, some of the guys dropped off in front of him, but even then, he probably would have still been kind of top 10, even without all the calamity. He's jumped himself back up to sixth in the title race after that uh, really, really strong weekend. And then Cam Hill, fastest on Sunday morning, followed it up with ninth on the grid. Um, but then on lap one, heading into 
I'll call it the final turn um, at the end of the back straight there, locked up, went off. Uh, he was he was dead last off at the end of the first lap and he was even able to fight his way back to 12th at the finish. Lots and lots of speed from this team. Hopefully they can convert that uh, into speed at Sandown, Bathurst, Gold Coast, etc. And uh, continue to fight up the front for the rest of the year. Grove Racing. Um, okay, Payne got himself a drive-through penalty for ignoring a red light in the pits and a mechanical black flag for the diffuser falling off the back. Didn't really matter. They didn't really have any pace. Um, they've dropped behind DJR in the team's championship now. The highlight of the weekend though for this team obviously uh, Richie being fastest in that wet practice session. Um, if any of the races are wet coming up especially you know Melbourne in September Sandown could well be a wet race He's going to be unbelievable. Uh, but yeah, that's, I mean, yeah, you try and look at something positive, but it wasn't really a, a great weekend for Grove Racing. Dick Johnson Racing. Um, after the improved form they'd been showing recently, they just didn't have pace all weekend. Mid pack at best. Um, they did jump the Groves in the team's championship though. Tickford Racing. Uh, Saturday was a very straightforward 4th and 12th for the Camelfield boys. Uh, Waters didn't really have the pace of the podium getters after those pit stops. He did, he got shafted a little bit, I suppose, doing the undercut as, uh, I think he was running second to Feeney at the time and they, Feeney was coming up behind some of the back markers and even, like, I was like, pit waters, pit waters, pit waters. And uh, I thought this is the perfect undercut strategy Feeney will get caught up and Waters will come out in front. Well, that, that, I, I was wrong. You were better off being caught up by traffic. Uh, but then later on in the race, he seemed to drop back a bit and, you know, kind of wasn't in that podium fight. Uh, Sunday, though, they locked out the front row of the grid with uh, Thomas Randall. Let's say he took his <laughs> first pole position. Um, then... He let off the start, he was really aggressive into turn one, love it, but then obviously had that bit of an issue going into the hairpin. I was very surprised that it was only Waters that got through and then Cam took off and into infinity and just dominated the race. If it wasn't for all the calamity behind, it probably would have been a bit of a boring race with Cam just dominating that one. He, he made it look easy. Um, yeah, it's a, you know, and he, he's got a little bit closer in the chance fight after this weekend. Uh, Randall for the rest of the race though, okay, he got a bit rough with Brown, gave him a bit of a bump and run and then Brown kind of escorted him off the track for his troubles. Then obviously the what went down with Feeney, yeah, okay, it, it was his fault. Um, 15 second penalty for it, of course. Yeah, he, re he kind of wrecked Feeney's day. Um, the, the big surprise for me though, he goes to try and apologize to Brock. It's not like, as, as well, it, I mean, it's Thomas Randall, he's kind of warm and cuddly. It's not like he's a real asshole or anything like that. And yeah, Dodo just stands there, no, you, you cannot cross this line. Don't come and apologize to my drivers, you jerk. Um, okay, the heat of the moment and whatever, but yeah, it's, it's Thomas Randall. He's trying to do the right thing. Like if, you know, if I was Thomas a bit next time, I'd be like, yeah, I'll just give him a serve, you know, and I'm not going to bother apologising. But that's just how I'd do it. Walkinshaw and Dreddy United. Um, the team with the biggest question mark coming into this round. Obviously, they'd struggled on the super soft tyres previously. And uh, yeah, they walked away looking like a team that can actually challenge for at least the Drivers' Championship. The team's is out of the question this year, but they look like they might be able to fight for this Drivers' Championship. Um, yeah. Chaz, really, really good over the weekend. Uh, Ryan Wood even, I mean, 11th and 8th, not bad. Not bad for a rookie, especially considering where they were a couple of rounds ago on these super soft tyres. Um, Chaz nearly took the win from Nick Perkett in race one, finished second there. Um, qualifying on Sunday was 11th. Um, yeah, but he then, he moved forward in the race, didn't get himself involved in any of the incidents. Fourth at the end of the day. Um, he's only 81 points now off Will Brown with two endurance races coming up. I mean, 
That could switch really, really quickly. Oh, having said that, Will Brown's got a pretty good co-driver with him. Um, they also took second in the team's, team's championship back off Tickford. I mean, we're only talking small margins, but considering the weekend that Tickford did have to actually, you know, steal, steal more points than them over the weekend, Pretty, pretty bloody good effort from the boys, uh, especially considering all the question marks coming into this weekend. Triple Eight. Now, this is strange to say, but overall, it was an improved weekend from the championship leaders. <laughs> improved. I mean, these guys. Um, yeah, but considering the last few rounds, they have looked a little bit off. The, you know, they, they could well have won both of these races over the weekend. Um, well, having said that, Cam was a long way ahead, but, you know, they, they were in the fight to win in the races over the weekend, whereas uh, a couple of times recently, they haven't really looked like they're in the fight. Um, Will Brown was unlucky, missing Q3 on Saturday. Uh, he, After Randall caused that red flag, he was another one with the sob story of, you know, why he didn't make it. Uh, Feeney got himself on pole, though. Uh, Brown raced forward from 16th on the grid to 7th, which was actually even more impressive considering he came into the pits and changed four tyres, and then I think he was battling with Courtney when he came out of the pits, locked up going into the hairpin, speared off, and then dropped back to... Well, at the time, I think was essentially last and then raced his way forward. Uh, granted, he had the bonus of doing the four tires rather than other people doing three and two. But he, yeah, to get back to seventh, really, really impressive. And then Brock's race, he was leading early on. Uh, he got beaten in the pit sequence by a couple of guys. And uh, yeah, then seemed to lose like he, he didn't quite have the pace for Nick or Chaz towards the end of the race. Uh, then on Sunday, Feeney was actually looking like he was going to pass Brown for, I think, the first time as teammates. I don't think Feeney's actually ever passed Brown, where Brown has passed Feeney quite a few times, uh, but then he got randled at the hairpin. Um, dropped him back to 15th, which what, you know, it probably should have been that second place. He should have been second and third, but yeah, these things happen. Uh, Brown obviously sold second on Sunday. Uh, didn't really look like he was going to challenge Waters, but at, at least, you know, over the last few rounds, th this, <laughs> this is a big improvement. That championship lead has come down though. Um, yeah, Ch Chaz is kind of coming at the moment. Moment. So you, you probably, you know, kind of just looking over your shoulder a little bit at him coming. Uh, but yeah, these guys, they'll pro they're probably going to win at Sandown and they'll be challenging at Bathurst. So yeah, it'll, uh, it could all be a very different story in a couple of weeks time. So that's my Simmons Plains review. Uh, do you agree with me about the three-part qualifying? Should we get rid of it and do something a little bit different? Like more races. Um, or, <laughs> yeah, or do you really enjoy it? And uh, yeah, what, what did you think of the racing over the weekend? Anyway, that's it for this week. Until next time, I'm still Dave and I'll catch you later.